Hello everyone, I'm Mayako Kisa and welcome to Sports Japan. So as always, we've got some great stuff lined up for you from the world of Japanese sports and martial arts. Today's show is all about kendo and we'll be visiting the recent world championships and checking out the techniques of a really gifted swordsman. Our guest today is kendo expert Alex Bennett. Welcome, hey, Alex. How are you? So you've been practicing kendo for over 27 years, That's and right. you are a seventh dom. Indeed, yes, I am. Great to have you. Thank you. So, Alex, I heard you coached for your home country, New Zealand, at the recent World Kendo Championships. So, That's how was right. it? Yeah, yeah, I was uh, went as the kantoku this time, which is the head coach for head the New coach. Zealand team, and uh, yeah, it was amazing. It was the 16th World Kendo Championships, and the first World Championships were held at the Nippon Budokan 45 years ago. So Ooh. it was like coming back to the spiritual home of Japanese martial arts. It was wonderful. I bet everybody was excited. They were, just to be able to compete there. I mean, it's such an incredible venue and yeah. so many people came to watch. Right, so, so I heard uh, there were 600 participants from 56 countries and territories. That's right, well, it was a little bit over 600 participants oh, wow. and 56 countries means that it was, yeah, you know, I guess you could call it the biggest <laughs> world championships ever so far, so it was pretty amazing. Right, great to hear that. So kendo has its roots in Japan, but has spread all over the world. So let's see how its universal appeal is helping bring people together from different cultures. Kendo is loved all around the world by men and women of all ages. The number of global participants now exceeds 2.6 million. Many of the world's top practitioners were in Japan recently for the Kendo World Championships held at the Nippon Budokan, the spiritual home of Japanese martial arts. <laughs> Hello, Anu. It was a chance for many of them to see for the first time how Kendo is practiced in its country of origin. Some teams were given technical advice from high-ranking masters, something that's not usually possible back home. They made enough time to stock up on energy, though, with visits to local eateries and ramen noodle shops. <laughs> Kendo has definitely come a long way and now plays an important role in bridging gaps between cultures. Here, the Japanese and Chinese teams are having a joint practice session. It was arranged by Toyonori Otsu, a former Japanese coach of the Chinese team. He used his connections from those days to bring the teams together. During my time coaching in China, there was a period of anti-Japanese sentiment. But interestingly, everyone involved in kendo still got on well. Through our swords, we had a deep connection. It was an environment where we could respect each other and practice. Otsu believes that kendo has the power to break down barriers and bring people together and hopes the sport will continue to develop in this way. The joint practice between China and Japan proved to be a great success. I fought against people today I wouldn't normally have the chance to. Even though we speak different languages, we understood each other through kendo. Toward the end of the Chinese team's stay, some Japanese children presented them with a letter and picture. The kids wrote it in Chinese with the help of a dictionary. They gave me a picture with the Japanese and Chinese flag on either side of a kendo mask. I was delighted and really touched. Japanese kendo practitioners have good technique and are very polite. I really got to like them. When the session ended, 
I looked at everyone's faces, and they all looked so different compared to how they did at the start. They were happy and shook hands. I'm glad it went well. Showing respect for your opponent is at the essence of kendo. This could be one reason why so many people are drawn to the sport. Mm, so isn't it really wonderful that people from different countries can really become close through kendo? Yeah, it's sort of like a paradox because we're, we're using swords or bamboo swords to strike each other. And it looks really violent, doesn't it? But actually it in kendo there's a teaching called ko ken chi ai, which means uh, to know love through crossing swords. Mm. And that basically means that through the act of training with, uh, with each other, um, we learn uh, respect, right. respect for each other. We want to uh, continue training with that person. And, you know, it's totally irrespective of your, uh, where you come from, your nationality, your religion. It's just like when you're out there, it's one-on-one -on -one right. and you create your own kind of universe. So that kind of respect that you get through training with other people from different countries is really precious, a really beautiful part of what we do in Kendo, I think. Right. So like you said, I really admire the manners and respect right from the start to the end of the contest. That's right. Well, the manners right at the start and right at the end, we always bow to each other, and that's uh, sort of like symbolic of that respect, that core ken chiai, that knowing mm. love, that bond that we've created with each other. It's a really crucial part of the martial arts training. Mm -hmm. And that unique philosophy is seen clearly in the rules for a successful strike or ippon, right? That's right. So in kendo, it's uh, it's not just a matter of hitting each other randomly. Right. There's a lot of stuff that goes on uh, uh, between the lines, if you like, as criteria that have to be met. And it's what makes it a little bit difficult for people to understand if they've never done it before. So it's probably best if I show you right. um, what you know uh, to score a point, the ippon, right. uh, what it what it requires. Okay. okay. So I'll get Please. to. My uh, assistant Michael to come out. Okay, so to score a point in Kendo, like I said, it's not just a matter of random striking and touching any part of the body. There are four targets uh, there's the man, there's the kote, which is the, uh, the gloves here, there's the door which is the body, and also there's a thrust to the throat. Now in order to <clears throat> make the point valid when we strike our opponent, um, we have to meet certain criteria which collectively is called ki, ken, tai, no ichi, which means the ki is your spirit, your energy, uh, ken is your sword, and tai is your body, and they all have to be perfectly in sync. So, for, so when I strike, for example, the head target or man, I must strike it with the correct part of the shinai, which is this area here, so it can't be too deep and it can't be too shallow. It must be right on that, uh, that point there with the blade facing the right way. I also must have correct posture. So I can't be sort of like off balance like this. I must be in good posture as soon as I make that strike. And also I must be in full spirits, which is represented by the, by the, sh the shouting. So Kendo's very noisy, so it goes something like this. Yeah! Okay, and that's only half of it because once I've made the strike, I have to demonstrate continued psychological and physical alertness, and this is called zanshin. So from here, I'll do the same strike. Yeah! And through to the other side, and I'm ready again. Okay, so that represents the zanshin aspect, and all of these things together make a valid point. Now, if any one of these is missing, like for example, I'm off balance, okay, that would not be counted, or if I don't have zanshin, let's say I make a nice strike to man, ah, yes, and I scored the point, and I'm feeling very pleased with myself without showing that continued psychological and physical alertness, then I will not score the point. Okay, so all of these things come together. I'll do it one more time. Yeah! Mm. And that's what uh, constitutes 
an ippon or a valid strike. That was fascinating. It's such a profound sport. So that philosophy was definitely evident at the World Kendo Championships. So how many different events were there, Alex? Well, basically there were four events. So four there was uh, uh, the men's individual and teams event and also the women's individual mm. and teams event. So that's four in total. Okay. So understandably, Japan has been dominant over the years as we can see here. That's right. I mean, Japan has pretty much won every single world championship title. Right. 15 times. Yep, except uh, in 2006 where uh, Korea actually won right. it for the first time. And even though you see Japan is number one right the way through except for 2006, mm -hmm. actually, uh, even though Japan looks like it's really dominant, in fact, um, you know, the rivalry between Japan and Korea is quite intense and it's not, <laughs> it's pretty close every time. It's pretty exciting. Okay, so this year's Kendo World Championship certainly lived up to expectations and was a thrilling event. So let's check out some of the action. More than 600 Kendo practitioners from 56 countries and territories were in Tokyo for this year's World Championships. Everyone was determined to win with a good clean strike on the biggest stage of all. The team competition is fought between teams of five members from each country. After some intense competition, the strongest 16 teams were left to battle it out. As hosts and reigning champions, the pressure was on Japan. Two young swordsmen, Yuya Takenochi and Ryohei Yamada, got them off to the perfect start. They build momentum for the other members, and Japan easily wins its last 16 match against a team from Hawaii. Japan beats Brazil in the quarterfinals, and in their semi-final match against Hungary, veteran captain Ryoichi Uchimura ensures they reach the final. The Republic of Korea were also in excellent form. The United States were their opponents in the semis. After a tough encounter, the match has to be decided by the two captains. In the end, it's Korea who come out on top. As many had predicted, Japan and Korea face each other in the final. It didn't fail to live up to its billing. Takenochi is first up to fight again. The really tall Manuk Jan is his opponent. <laughs> Jang tries to use his height advantage and goes on the attack. But Takenochi is quick and defends himself well. And then, with just 45 seconds left on the clock... <laughs> Takenochi's victory gives Japan an early lead. But in the second bout, Korea strike back. The Korean competitor strikes the mask, taking the match to 1-1. The third bout is a mouth-watering affair between Japan's Masahiro Shodai and last year's Korean champion, Byung-hun Park. They both want to put their team in the lead, and neither is prepared to give the other an inch. Park leaves himself fractionally open and Shodai swiftly attacks the gap to strike his wrist. Shodai soon scores again. The fourth bout is drawn, so it's all down to Japan captain Ryoichi Uchimura to try claiming the title in the final bout. 
He needs a win or a draw. The Korean captain Kang Ho Lee attacks ferociously to try and reverse his team's fortunes. But Uchimura is staunch and doesn't retreat, launching some quick-fire attacks himself. The captain doggedly pressures his opponent, demonstrating Japan's brand of forceful kendo. Japan hold out until the end to win the final, two bouts to one. In the face of some tough opposition, it's a fitting conclusion to a successful tournament. That was exciting. So what's your impression on the Japanese team? Well, to be expected, of course, they're really, really strong, like really aggressive. Uh, they were always putting pressure on their opponents, so they didn't give them an inch. Mm. They didn't give them a chance really to do their kendo, right? So this is, um, in kendo we have a teaching called San Sappo, San which Sappo. is basically the three ways of killing your opponent's kendo. And okay. that's what the, the Japanese are really good at. So literally it's, it's to kill your opponent's techniques, mm -hmm. it's to kill your opponent's ki or energy, and it's to kill their sword. And mm. if you can do all these three things, then your opponent really can't do anything. And before you know it, you've been beaten. So uh, that's what the Japanese are really, really good at, I think. And um, I think uh, maybe if we look at a video, we all can right. uh, uh, understand this concept a little bit oh, definitely. easier. So <clears throat> here we have, uh, this is the uh, Japanese versus the, the Korean in the first match. And uh, Takenuchi is just going uh, solidly, as is, is this guy here going solidly, not giving the opponent a chance to use their techniques at all, right? So they're, they're cutting them down, cutting mm. down the techniques, and and then uh, the next one's killing your opponent's energy or their key. Okay. So even though the opponent might be really keyed up and ready to go, mm -hmm. you are more keyed up. Oh. And you're overcoming their energy with your okay. energy. And uh, Uchimura, uh, if you see his um, eyes when he's going into his fight, it's like fearsome. Really? He's like, he's not going to let you come at him <laughs> at all, and it just says it all, right? So, Can't really see his eyes here. <laughs> no, no, but, <laughs> but his, his opponent can, believe okay. me. <laughs> okay, okay. Here we go, look at his eyes, they're awesome. Mm. It's just like, ah, don't you come near me because I'm going to hit you. That's the sort of, uh, this kind of attitude that the, that the Japanese had right the way through. They were just so uh, ready to explode at any time. I see. Yeah. And what about the final part, killing the sword? Yeah, killing the sword, um, that's probably easier for me to demonstrate. So please, I'll, please. I'll get Michael to come on over again. So <clears throat> as the, the two fences face off like this, okay, we've got the, the key going and uh, you know, we're trying to find an opening in our, in our uh, opponent. And one way to create an opening is to knock the opponent's sword off, off your center line. And there are various techniques which help us do this, like for example, the harai techniques, where we just knock the opponent's sword out of the way. Okay, like that, which means he's off center. So if I knock that off, bam, I can strike man. Or there's uh, um, osairu, okay, it's to suppress your opponent's shinai. So you're coming down through the center and he has no freedom to move. Okay, so from that position, I have the advantage and then I can strike man or whatever, te uh, whatever opening is available. Um, there are other techniques such as the makiwaza, or, which is to wind your opponent's shinai around off center. So flicking it up out of the way and then striking. So that's very effective. And sometimes the opponent's shinai goes flying across the floor. Okay, and they're completely off balance and then I can strike man or door or kote, or whatever is available. Um, and then there are other instances which uh, we could uh, see in the video where we're probing, probing, looking for a, an opening to attack, and then boom, so you pretend you're about to go, you put that pressure on, your opponent freezes up, and then you're able to uh, follow through and strike. So you're, complete, you're basically making your opponent think you're going to attack, and then you uh, uh, take that timing off for a split second, and while they're thinking about it, 
that's when you strike. So all of these things are going on in the matches with Japan, uh, which is why they were so effective mm. and which is why they got the result that they were after. Right, so killing the opponent's sword attacks and energy robs them of their freedom of movement, right? That's right, yep, yep. Right, wow. So, as we saw earlier, Yuya Takenouchi got the Japan team off to a perfect start. So let's see how he prepared for the big event. It was at last year's All Japan Kendo Championships that Yuya Takenouchi first attracted attention. At just 21 years old, he became the youngest ever national champion and the first university student to win the tournament in 43 years. An amazing feat in a sport where experience means so much. His technique was also a hot topic of conversation. Here, he executes Ojiwaza, a counterattack. Takenouchi's Ojiwaza is over in the blink of an eye, so we examined it with the help of a high-speed camera. Takenouchi begins by letting his sword drop. He's deliberately giving his opponent the opportunity to attack. His opponent falls for the trap and goes for a strike to the mask. But Takenouchi is ready and parries the attack at the last second. His opponent's torso is now unguarded and open for Takenouchi to strike. The parry and strike is over in just 0.5 seconds. It's a move that requires instantaneous judgment and lightning-fast execution. Having a counter-attack technique puts more fear into my opponent. It's a really good weapon to have. In the lead-up to the World Championships, Takenouchi practices various Ojiwaza counter-attacking techniques at an intensive training camp. He goes over various possible scenarios and confirms the angle and path of the blade. Repeated practice makes his Ojiwaza second nature. Team coach Toshia Ishida gives him some advice. Imagine your swords are locked like this. Don't disengage and strike directly. If you move like this first, it gives you a better angle. If the opponent is drawn off balance while disengaging, a better angle is created to strike the mask while moving backwards, a good technique for fighting at close quarters. Ishida thinks many opponents may try to draw Takenouchi in close, concerned about his Ojiwaza counter-attacking techniques. A competitor with a lot of aces up his sleeve has more chances to win. He also needs to create a good impression with the judges in the early stages of the bout, before deciding the contest with one of his favorite strikes. The training camp is ideal preparation. Takenouchi is now ready to win, no matter who he faces. There are some bouts I can't afford to lose. I'll do what I can to make sure I win. It's Takenouchi's first ever World Championships. He's been given the task of the team's first bout. A win is crucial as it sets the tone for the rest of the tournament. As advised by his coach, he strikes while moving away from his opponent and starts to build momentum. The Japan champion displays a range of skills and continues landing strikes.
In the final, the highly skilled Koreans provided Japan with their biggest test. Takenouchi tries to stay close to his 1.94 meter tall opponent and not give him any space to attack. Takenouchi's attacks are extremely fast, keeping his opponent constantly under pressure. He waits for the slightest gap. And with 45 seconds to go, Takenouchi shows his opponent his wrist, inviting him to attack. His opponent takes the bait. Takenouchi parries and counters in a flash. Takenouchi's Ojiwaza is first class, and the judges give him the points. I was told to keep going until the end, and I knew I'd get the chance to strike. I thought if I won, the team would win. I'm really pleased. I am really proud of this young competitor. Yep, Takenouchi is pretty incredible. He's like, you know, one of the, the new sort of heroes of Japanese kendo. He's like able to attack from any position. He's got amazing speed. Okay. And he's got uh, that kind of confidence. Mm. Um, so he's, got, he's so confident in his ability that uh, even the referees sort of feel confident <laughs> in him as well. So yeah, he's, he's quite an incredible competitor. Right. And he's so young too. I know, and yeah. he helped Japan win in two categories in the men's. So I wanted to ask, how about the women's? Uh, the women's kendo is really, you know, really coming up. It's quite oh, really? amazing now. Uh, um, the World Championships for women is, is quite a recent thing, only a few years. Uh, but the overall level is really uh, improving. Uh, Japan and Korea, the final was phenomenal. Really? Yeah, it was like really intensive. One of the best matches I've ever seen, in fact. Mm. And uh, yeah, they were just, uh, uh, you know, the energy, the skill level, the speed, uh, mm. the determination. It was just beautiful to watch. Mm, that is great to hear. Mm. So thank you for joining us, Alex, today. And thank you for all the performances. Thank Please you very come much. back again. So thank you, everybody, for watching Sports Japan. And we'll see you next time.